it's me, Liquid. Is it even recording? It is recording. I'm retarded. Hey guys, it's me, Liquid Rage here. Uh, why don't I just fucking call this part eight instead of seven? Instead of seven, two out of two. Because I don't care. Because you touch yourself at night, that's why. <laughs> now that we're back into the swing of things, we are here, and we're gonna... F uh, Leon, oops. We are going to f finish up chapter two. Oh, cool. Exactly where I left off. Nice. If you're thinking of looking through any of them, let me give you a little warning. Those things are filed with graphic, disturbing photos of all kinds of crime scenes. It's the kind of thing any normal person would ever want to look at. Be careful. Oh, what do you mean? All those files are under investigation reports related to different cold cases. Those are internal documents for police eyes only. They're not the kind of thing you'd expect to leak. Oh. Hmm. So I finally begin to understand the true splendor of this library. The entire reason I was interested in this library is because of this room right here. It's home to classified government documents, police records. Things no ordinary person would ever see. His name is Byakuya. Uh, that's his name. Isn't it magnificent? This can't be for real, right? Such that's your guys' problem. Anything that doesn't fit into your preconceived reality, you label it as you label it a lie. It's not that. It's just it's not like I totally refuse to believe it. But I mean, there's just so much. How can anyone have put this all together? Hmm. I, I suppose it just goes to show how much power Hope's Peak truly wields, or perhaps the mastermind may have wanted us to prov wanted to provide us with enough entertainment to keep us from getting bored. Um, it's no use. I can't keep up with all this. It's just too unreal. Hmm. What's wrong? You still can't believe it? What about you? How can you believe it so easily? Things like that are usually impossible. Yeah. What do you mean usually? Usual, normal, like ordinary, simple. These things don't exist anywhere in the real world. If you begin to understand what they actually represent, you don't understand the nature of anything. You don't pull your punches, do you? Because what do you consider usual based on your... What you consider usual is based on your common sense, right? What makes you think your own common sense applies to me at all? Documents gathered here are genuine. I have reviewed them multiple times, so there is no doubt... Hold on a second. You're saying you've read all these do documents more than once? But... This all has to be, like, top-secret confidential stuff, right? So why? Hmm. Our family has a reading room just like this at our home. Ours is bigger, of course, and not as dusty. Huh? Hmm. Members of the Togami family have access to any variety of government-related documents. That includes foreign powers as well as domestic. How is that possible? So, in other words... I already told you, there's a secret council that controls the world from the shadows. <laughs> My family's a member of that council. And I have within me the bloodline that will allow me to one day bend the world to my will. So why'd they allow you to go to this school then and be trapped here? But to become such a ruler, I must know all the levels of this world backwards and forwards. So whenever I have time, I like to review whatever documents and materials to interest me. Which is why I can proclaim, without a doubt, that the materials gathered here are the real thing. This is beyond believing or not believing. Byakuya is actually starting to scare me more than the actual mastermind. Hmm. And that's what always in and what always interests me, or most were the cold case police investigation reports. Reading through these reports have always been a hobby of mine ever since I was little. Ex excellent mental exercise. I've solved more than a few of these cases just by reviewing the reports. And among the re all the reports, one of my recent favorites is the Genocide Jack case. As he talked, Byakuya... I hate that name so much. Grab a specific file from the shelf. That's right. This is the complete case file. Every single report surrounding Genocide Jack cases have been compiled in here. Because hmm. there are so many, allow me to quickly summarize the main points. To begin with, there are two notable characteristics in every Genocide Jack murder. The first characteristic is that every crime scene the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. At the second... So when the victims are murdered, their bodies are suspended in a certain way. I can't tell if she's missing her eyes or not, honestly. The bloodlust is written in blood and the victim's body is suspended. It's exactly the same thing that happened to Chihiro. 
Save your surprise. The best part is yet to come. <laughs> For the second characteristic, where the victims are suspended, the only ones who knew about this particular fact were the members of the police and other higher-ups. By all accounts, nobody in the media ever found out. Huh? <laughs> in other words, no one on the news, no one online, nobody knew about the aspect of each crime. Only key officials and the killer himself knew about this act of mounting the victim. Now, if you recall Chihiro's corpse... Her body was most certainly mounted in this fashion. So how could a killer have known about suspending the victim? That's right. That's the key question. But in fact, the answer is quite simple. In other words... The culprit isn't a copycat killer, it's the real Genocide Jack. G in other words... That right there is the evidence that Genocide Jack has hidden himself among the rest of us. Th then Genocide Jack really is such a brutal Phoenix killer with is walking among us? <laughs> Things are really starting to get interesting, aren't they? I never imagined the killer of such a reputation would ever become part of our little game. Don't you, you know, don't you think it would... Bleh, don't you think it would be good for you to take a look at what I've already seen? You might just manage to fret out a clue or two. So you get down on your knees and beg, I might even show you myself. It's not a thick file stuffed into the bookshelf. Well, as far as investigation reports. <laughs> Okay, about the chance I jack his Can you let me see it? That's fine. Well, you didn't beg, but I guess it's okay this time. Feel free to look at it in here, but you can't take it with you. <laughs> like, it's just a big black book. <laughs> just <laughs> murder cases of genocide, Jack. Top secret. Biaki handed me the files. I flipped through with tense, nervous fingers. Suddenly, my hand stopped. I reached the page where the photos of the scene of each crime have been collected. The name of Genocide Jack's victims ran on for several pages. So the murder weapon is usually what they used to hang them to the wall. Genharada 32, Tetsuhiro Honda 17, Shoki. Gaku, 23. Kano, Issei, 14. 14, ooh. Takeshi Yoshida, 30. Kom Komatsunad, Taro, Tefumi Gono, Ush Uchida. Ah, fuck me, man. Naoishi. Takeshi Mizume. Yudo Yumejima. There is no end to it. One thing to get perfectly clear as I read. All the killers or countless victims were killed and suspended in exactly the same way. At the scene of each murder, the word bloodlust was left in the victim's own blood. Hmm. Let's take a look at the next page. I'll find another interesting tidbit. The next page. Profiling results. All the crimes took place either on weekdays, at night, or during holidays, either day or night. The most common time for killing six place was on holidays in the afternoon. Based on these facts, it could be suggested that the suspect may be a student. Oh, no. Evidence suggests that the suspect lingered at the scene. When they did leave, they were in a panic. It was an eyewitness who never has come forward. It was unlikely there was any external reason for this. The confused behavior suggests that this... Oh, my God, no. That the suspect may potentially suffer from... Disassociative identity disorder. So, in other words, the key point here is that the culprit may well have a split personality. Split personality, the thing you, the kind of thing you see on TV. So, part of another totally unbelievable story. But this one's way more unbelievable than anything else up until now. Or maybe it really isn't. I don't know. I feel like my mind has gone numb. Genocide Jack case file has been added. Let's go. We should get it going soon. Oh, where are we hmm. going? Hey, we're here. We finished our business here, haven't we? Oh, wait, Byakuya. As usual, Byakuya turned and left without another word. I hurried out of the library to catch up. Hmm. Well, this is where we part ways. I have some things I need to take care of before the class trial. Just all of a sudden like that? Come on, enough for your annoying miss... 
apprehensions. Did you really think we'd be together the whole time? Take responsibility for yourself and do something useful. Move the investigation forward on your own. Goodbye. Well, goodbye. And just like that, he was gone. Just as quickly as asked me to join him, he cut me off. And then I feel like I was some plaything getting tossed around. At the same time, I've uncovered some really important clues thanks to him. Genocide Jack, he's the one that killed Chihiro. That murderous fiend is one of us. But who is it? I have to find out no matter what it takes. And do that. There's somewhere I have to go to investigate one more time. I have to go back to the crime scene. The girls' locker room. I should check the boys' locker room, too. And the others may have some info. I may come up with these fun missiles. Alright. Okay. Alright. Okay. Okay. Alright. Okay. Right. Also, them here. I'll go to the locker rooms. He feel me has discovered evidence revealing the identity of the culprit. I feel as if well, another stat increase for me. Everyone's what you find. Mm -hmm. I cannot reveal that just yet. Yes. But I guarantee I'm that what I found will steal the killer's breath from his lungs. Are you sure about that? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Miss mm -hmm. Ludenberg said she witnessed something worthwhile too. Really, what you see? Well, she refused to tell me. Seem... It's like when a girl bullies the boy she likes, right? Right? So where is Celeste now? Mm -hmm. The warehouse by the mm -hmm. dorms. She was there, but at the same time, not there. What's it gonna be? Let's go in the boys' locker room, because you brought it up. Ooh, what the fuck? There's a strange stain on the carpet. What is it? Boys' locker room carpet. Oh, the, f the pictures have been switched around. This poster. It's a popular boy band called Tornado. Somehow it doesn't quite fit to the boys' locker room. Ah. Uh. It's a blessing puzzle. The blood is most important part, but big breasted swimsuit miles. Pretty noticeable, too. The girls' locker room doesn't seem like that kind of place you find something like this. Oh, but wait, that reminds me. The post in the other room is. That's right, there's definitely something strange about this. In the boys' locker room, there's a poster of a popular boy band. In the girls' locker room, there's a poster of a big breasted swimsuit model. Could this be the poster that's switched? But if they were, why? What reason would anyone have? Maybe you talk to someone who's at the locker rooms. You spent a lot of time exercising in the girls' rock locker room, right, Sakura? Of course. He's in nearly every day since it opened up. Sometimes Hina and I use it together. Okay, let me ask you something. Do you think the posters in the boys and girls' locker rooms could have been switched? I'm sorry. Sorry, I can't really say. I've never really paid any attention to the posters, I see. However. But there's something that's been bothering me about this locker room. You see, I like to drink a lot of protein coffee every time I finish exercising. We have protein coffee? Mm. In the warehouse. Not the highest quality, but I don't have a lot of other options. I mix protein powder with coffee and down a glass of it after exercising. Oh. Anyway, the other day I spilled something on the carpet in the girl's locker room and I left a stain. A stain? I'm not seeing a stain on the carpet now. Exactly. I noticed it earlier. The stain has disappeared. I can only assume someone has come along and cleaned it up. But still, there's... Isn't it unusually clean? As if there was never a stain here to begin with. Hey. In a real complex about being weak. You're here to talk about, right? All I need to do is get stronger. Yeah, I do remember shit more than once. You do. Yeah. Alright. Yoko, have you made any progress on investigation? Generally speaking, However, if I have to get going, I have something unrelated to take care of. Something besides the investigation, what is it? Well, Nothing you need to worry about. Just concentrate on the murder. But, but so before I let go, let me give you one piece of advice. You should. Oh. Goodbye. I'll be praying for your success. I can never look at the body then. Chiro's handbook is something that's definitely worth worrying about. Let's go examine the body one more time. She's a thoroughly, but I do have my limits. Well, back of a shot, anyways. Let's see. Her hands are bound with some kind of rope. Rope was used to prop her up in some kind of crucifix position, huh? The rope has a plop. Ooh. The more I think about it, well, that's not the one thing that concerns me. 
Chihiro's failure energy was a blow to the head. Alright, so her eyes are still actually in her and I'm just stupid. Someone struck her in the head in order to kill her. That's right, there's an issue of her being suspended in a fatal blow. Or sin any reason to think too much about either of them. But seeing them again after looking through Genocide Jack file, something's not quite right. What does it all mean? What's making the most likely to tie all these mysteries together is the true nature of the rope was used to suspend Chihiro. Figure out there's a certain place I need to revisit and look over again. Plus, I might be able to look at a Genocide Jack case file one more time. I already know exactly what it is. She got strangled to death. The blow to the head's supposed to mislead you. I actually read the paper. I think I re I'm not sure if I read it out loud or not, but I know I read it. I'm stupid. Why am I going down here? And I need to talk to some people about her mental state and shit like that. I'm gonna have a look at Jess I cat case file. I know it's around here somewhere. Oh, it's gone. Did someone take it out of the archive? The only one who do something like that is. Can't think of anyone but Yakuya. Still more I need to check. Oh. There's a thick layer of dust on top of the desk. Maybe there's some kind of clue here. Guess not. What the fuck did you say that for, you fucker? One box is empty. The extension core was in there before. Alright, so it's nothing in the archive, but it's something in here, I'm pretty sure. So, let's take a look, ladies and gentlemen. The shelf is packed out with books. We're looking at it. Maybe there's some kind of clue here. Guess not. You motherfucker. There's one of the monitors my computer. Right now, I was just showing a school crest. God, you are not helpful. Thanks, Gamera. The mastermind must have been watching this chair was killed. You know what happens? It's still forcing us to go through with it. Oh, no, nope, not supposed to go through. The shelf is packed out with books. We're looking at it. Maybe some kind of clue here. Guess not. What? Maybe this one. What the fuck I have a book here? We're looking at it. Maybe I'm gonna clear. Guess not. What? Why? According to this letter, hope the academy has stopped functioning in school. What's more important, it didn't it closed down over a year ago. Imagine my problems with being school to start this killing game, which explains why there aren't any students because it's not a real school. And then there's these serious issues that forced school to close down in the first place. Is there any connection to that what's happening to us now? So that's Ryan's motive. If we could figure out why we want to prison us all here, would that be enough to get us out of here? Or. There's a plug there, and I... Lamp. Lamp won't turn on. She's not plugged in. Lamp scores long enough to reach outlet from here. Last time I saw it, it was definitely on, and it definitely was right here. Alright. Byakuya was using an extension cord. There's no extension cord here now. I wonder if... Okay. Archive. Oh, wait, yeah, I've been there. Whoop! Maybe we should have confessed our embarrassing secrets after all. Damn it, I'm sorry, Chihiro. It's all because I was strong enough. How okay, well. Anything myself, that's for sure. I definitely haven't looked inside the mailbox. Huh? 
You really can relate to Kiss Keeper, but something about it still bothers me. That's the wrong button. That's also the wrong button. Oh, he, oh hey, Hina, how's Toko doing? Mm. Came with before. She won't come out. She keeps mumbling something about Genocide Jack. <laughs> so I just left her there. You left her? That was all swimming. I was getting pretty hungry. Yeah. Oh, but don't worry. I might head back as soon as I'm done eating. Toko's not exactly pleasant, but I'm still worried about her. Speaking of which, what are you eating? Huh? A donut, of course. Oh, of course. <sighs> the two fink got. <laughs> yeah, I remember this. The two fink of sure got created our space and donuts. Really. Mm. But she would have liked to eat more donuts. Maybe that was her one big regret. Oh. I should have tried spending more time with her. I'm to think of who did she spend time with. Well. She looked bit strange. She didn't really hang out with the other girls much. It was like she was trying to keep her distance from us. Actually, Sakura said something similar. She said that even you and her invite Chihiro to exercise with you. She always refused. Yeah, yup, it's true. No, it's not It was just like she stayed away from all the girls. Was she just shy? Mm. I don't know. She talks about boys all the time. It's kind of weird to be shy with your own sex, but totally fine with the opposite sex. Ah. Oh, wait. Maybe. Maybe she used to see this guy spoiling her. The law says you can't judge a book by its cover, right? You think so? I never really saw her as that kind of girl. I know for a fact I'm gonna screw up horribly with this fucking trial. Well, at least the one that's coming up. Okay. Where? Oh, that's where the warehouse is. I didn't actually know. Now I do. Ooh. Celeste, what are you doing here? <laughs> this warehouse is amazing. It has absolutely everything one might need to live a full life. From food, to clothes, to towels, there's an endless supply to choose from. I see that, but you have anything related to the case? Most unfortunate. I knew you were going to ask me that. It's almost like that's what we're doing, you fuck! I thought about t talking about the warehouse might misdirect you, but I see it was pointless. Then did you find something? <laughs> Very well. I will tell you, and only you. Actually. Last night, I saw her here. Chihiro was in the warehouse. What, really? Mm -hmm. This was right before nighttime. Hmm? What are you doing out this late? Oh, um, I was just... Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. <sighs> she stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. Yes, indeed. I assumed she was merely stocking up to go exercise in the morning, but... It would appear she ignored the nighttime rule and headed directly to the girls' locker room. If she hadn't broken our rule, none of this ever would have happened. <laughs> you get what you deserve, I suppose. So apparently, she went to the girls' locker room late at night in order to exercise without anyone knowing. But the strange thing is, there was no trace of the track check or duffel bag, such as she saw a hero carrying, which means the killer was the guy rid of it somehow. Celeste can, alright, cool. Um, so, uh... I'm getting tired of waiting. Shall we just plunge right in? It's the moment you've all been waiting for! The class trial! You remember where to meet, right? Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon! 
Well, at least this time I am not thinking. I'm not thought of as the murderer. Which that's good. That door is right through here. So is everyone ready to what? Hmm? Am I blind or are we missing someone? Yo. Yeah, Toko is not here. And Toko is. I really don't remember. Come on. Kidding. I'm just kidding. How could I forget that little nut job? He's a crucial part of the class trial this time. What are you gonna do? Okie dokie. I'll go ahead and just drag her out here, kicking and screaming. Just one moment, please. Just like you said, a few minutes later, he reappeared dragging Toko behind him. I told him I didn't want to, but he forced me. I can't believe you would drag a girl around. Yeah. Terrible, you're t terrible. Phew. Woo! So, now everyone's here, right? Okay then, hustle onto the elevator and let's get this show on the road. I'll see you guys down there! Let's go. Shall I get going? It's time to find out who killed Chihiro. Chihiro. Chiro Fu Fujisaki. She's so gentle, so calm and meek. Nobody had any problems with her. Someone made a choice to kill a girl like that. That murderer is one of us. Someone standing right here. Hmm. You ready? Are we doing this? Well, then. I will uncover the villain who performs such heinous acts on a weaker individual. Shall we go? Shall we begin? Hmm. I don't know why the killer did what they did, but I'm sure it'll work itself out. Justice always prevails, right, bro? Oh, Miss Fujisaki. <laughs> I must admit, for being 3D, she was quite remarkable. Of course, just the idea of 3D makes me cringe. <laughs> hey, come on. Fucking Toku, man. What's guy so worked up? There is something odd about Toko's behavior. I do not think mere shock is enough to explain it. That is not who I clicked on. <laughs> I guess there wasn't much help at all on this one. <laughs> I gave you plenty to work with. Show us how far logic can take you. We have no choice, right? We have to do this. Yes. He gave us a all nod in reply. With one last deep breath, we walked for the elevator on shaky legs. If each step forward, I could feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. As soon as everyone was on, the elevator began to descend. I couldn't get handle my emotions. I couldn't stop speculating. There's so much less this time. There's so much less, I mean, too. Um. Ah. Fuck. <coughs> The steel box sank with heavy clunking sounds deeper and deeper into the ground. As we went deeper, the uneasiness of my heart grew bigger and bigger. The elevator was unaffected, however, and continued to descend without hesitation. Nah, no shit. Alright, so probably like last time, there's not gonna be too much talking from me besides maybe a bit of rage with the fucking rhythm game at the end, you know. Usual. Till finally, I came to a sudden stop. What do you think? I redecorated. Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? Hmm. Don't waste our time with stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Go. Good, good. You're rip raring to go. I gotta say, I don't hate it. Not at all. Well, okay, then. Let's get the show on the road. Thrills, chills, Everyone, please find your assigned seats. Here we go. And so the curtain opened once again. Deadly judgment, deadly deception, a deadly betrayal. Deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith. Deadly class trial. Okay, so the clues we got are... Sakura's account. Locker room dumbbell. Mondo's account. Card reader. 
Main Hall E Handbooks, Broken E Handbook, Genocide Jack Case File. Her, uh, I was can't, I cannot pronounce her name. I'm sorry. I'm retarded. Boys Locker Room Carpet. Two locker room posters, Chihiro's e handbook, status of the dead body, disappearing stain, library desk lamp, and Celeste account. More than I thought we had, honestly. Set skills. We literally only have one skill, though. Oh, no, we have more than one skill. I'm an idiot. I don't remember the controls for this, honestly. Trial. All rise. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay, then. So, first off, let's talk about the murder weapon! First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. <laughs> Interesting. That certainly would make for a powerful weapon. Poor Chihiro. Well, I bet you've seen the crime. There was something with a blood stain on it. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. Okay. Aim is mouse. Silencer is right and mouse button. Control is fast forward. Okay. Contra space key. Got it. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. It missed! Certainly would make for a powerful weapon. What to feel? I'm at a BS get a time. Yes, I know. Thank you, game. So I'll make sure fast forwarding was control right. According to the Monokuma file, what kind of thing? I bet it was an iron pipe. BAM! No, it's wrong. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime? No, we can't. It was covered in blood, and there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. I mean, you could have used it afterwards as a fucking distract, whatever. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You looked at her head wound? Yeah! That's so creepy! If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. What? For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack, being a serial killer. You really killed Chihiro? No, oh, I'm as bad to not stop the page. Would you like to hear more? Yes. Why Why would I not? Forest debate. Lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. Your truth bolts will disappear if you hit these lines. Think them as an obstacle in your debate. No way to keep this white noise from getting in your way. Press the right mouse button to attach a silencer, which you can use to shoot down the white noise. However, if you shoot an actual remark with the silencer instead of the white noise, the time limit will decrease, so take careful aim when you have your silencer out. But well, if your action difficulty is set to gentle, the white noise won't appear at all. In that case, you can forget about the silencer, just focus on the situation in front of you. Well then, good luck and have fun. The 
culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure of it. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible! Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on! There's just no proof for it. Hey, so, speaking of Genocide Jack, I don't know who that is! <laughs> You guys should be like, I want to look at anyone will be cast. The culprit is genocide Jack. Shut up. I'm sure of it. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible. All right. Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on. There's just no proof for it. No, it's wrong. I might know one reason he could be involved. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive. I found it myself. No one else helped me. Definitely not Byakuya. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Oob lust. I really hope this guy's the murderer. I don't actually. Uh, no. It's actually bloodlust. But more important <laughs> is the other characteristic, and it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? I'm not sure if any just like for that large doesn't know. If I'm not mistaken, that's the positioning of the body. Apparently, in every Genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro is most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real genocide Jack. No fucking way! <laughs> That's unfucking believable! You're saying genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. Man, why is this gonna be so complicated? Oh no. Oh, Hangman's Gabbit. I forgot about this. Um... Um... If you draw on letters or hanging screens, you take damage. If your influence cage reaches zero, you will fail the case. So terms of special actions you can take, e.g. concentration.
What the fuck? What is this? All it says is... <sighs> Trying to think of what word has H-I in the middle of it. First layer begins with some of these things. What? Oh, uh... I'm gonna fucking fail, man. Where's the A? Give me an A. Give me an A! Give me an A! Whatever. Schizo. That was fucking bullshit. That was really fucking bullshit for me. Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? It's half a word! Schizophrenia! Schizo! Fuck this game! God damn it! I think I read that somewhere in the file too. They thought that the suspect might have what did they call it? Dissociative identity disorder. Oh, okay. But still, go and say that about Miss Fukawa is perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. She fainted. Her behavior changed. Obviously. You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then when she woke up. You fine, I'm fine. Yeah. Well, is that dead body here? He's dead. Yeah. Was it hurt real hard when she fainted? The world is a front and back. Top. It. Inning and a bottom, a sea of truth and a web of lies. This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. She was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can handle blood, and one that obviously can. <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? Only Genocide Jack ever. Was the driver to kill, the driver to murder his fiend. The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. Uh, how? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. 
She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise... I'm sorry I couldn't keep our promise, but don't worry, never again, we won't let Genocide Jack... Oh, is this a short trial? You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's the only reason I promise. How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that, but you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it, but, but... But your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person? Y you don't mean... Wow, hello there! Is it me you were hoping to see? What the fuck? now she's really weird though I don't like it never mind Murderous fiend genocide Jack. This is this is this is beyond insane. Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you. I am the mastermind of all masterminds. Just kidding. Then it's not true. Of course it's not true. How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid? And another thing, the police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless. I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town. Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again! <laughs> this should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. 
If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. Ooh. But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah. I could never believe a word you say, you monster! Um, oh, I guess we're gonna have to defend her then! Maybe. Maybe she's totally right about that, but something's still bothering me. Watch this, I need to get more details of all this. Oh, this case has got like 50 times more interesting right now. Holy shit. I thought it was just gonna end right there. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone! You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. What more proof do we need? <laughs> Give it up. You killed her. I wonder what I'm supposed to click. Can I focus on remember Chiro's body? Oh, that's been the answer. That should prove what you said isn't quite right. Well, that's not you true. That, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking. When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. No, it's wrong. Get fucked. Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Huh? How is it any different? Uh-oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage! <laughs> <laughs> That's copyrighted. This is no creation of mine. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the genocide jack cases and this one. One clear difference is between the murders. There are the photos from the other side of genocide jack cases. Look at the neck and the stomach. You see a clear difference. I got it. For one. The cause of death is different. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. But Chihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, uh, yes. That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail? To suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right! In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Would you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? No, nah, I'm fine with this. Please go on more about it. So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? That's right, the second difference is really it's either she was suspended. Opposed to the other genocide jack cases, all the other victims were stabbed through their hands. You see a cliff difference. I got it. Do you remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrist. Wire! What is your point? Well, in all the previous genocide jack cases. Something else was used to suspend them. Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. And 
Guess what? I used my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement. Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? He <laughs> really liked his personality, honestly. Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac? Are you referring to me? It's Nigel, please. Listen up, Big Mac. <laughs> Ooh, please tell me more. Yes. I'm interested. My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims were in each genocide jack case. They were all guys! There's a pattern there, just waiting to be discovered. A pattern? Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, there is a pattern surrounding the genocide jack victims, and Chihiro didn't fit it. If you look at the names of every victim, what you notice is, I think I figured out I was just gonna kill Chiro. I got it. Is it because Chihiro was a girl? Bingo, bullseye, right on the money! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. Ken Harada, Tetsuko Honda, Soji Kaku, Kano Issei, Takeshi Yanda, Kama blah blah blah. Yeah, we already read all the names, but they're, they're all, all guys. Guys? That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little men! I can't believe I said it! I'm so embarrassed! <laughs> the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> God. So since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, we wouldn't kill her? Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of the one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is. Oh to. my god, was it Buakia? It's a different matter entirely. When you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, lowly Kerr! Lowly Kerr? I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! That does make some amount of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors. Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Maybe you used the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school? Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high-class envy of the entire world scissors! Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? What? Da, 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 da! <laughs> She's fully equipped. This girl went from actually one of my least favorite in the game to Probably like the best character ever. Oh my fucking god. That's right, so I can go anywhere, anytime. Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong. You can't can you stutter dogs, all of you. Not to mention I have no clue how to tie a good knot. <laughs> so answer <laughs> the question anyway. <laughs> oh. I have no idea what's going on anymore. Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? Yes. Definitely. Yes. But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Except for Barracuda over there. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal and not some copycat killer or whatever. Actually, there's one person. One person has copycat cases. 
I just want to take a good look at him real quick. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I love the tongue. Love the voice. Love the, love the thing she says. Oh my god. Perfection. Here's my answer. Ba bam. Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus, you'd already looked through the genocide jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Ooh. Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? Then the reason he pushed the theory of genocide jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. Oh, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it. The adorable glasses man was behind it all. Oh, I'm on fire! Elbiakia, <laughs> what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask, when would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Look back. back. Oh, sorry. Forgot. I don't talk now. The way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. The locker rooms. They're suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. Won't you agree? Huh? Suspicious. I think nobody starts the locker room. Let's start with the girls' locker room. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? But in fact, I don't have a dick. Plot twist of the century. The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. You, you're a fucking creep. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. <laughs> this is a contradiction what Byakuya just said. I think it cleared everyone. Oh, oh my god, yes! I'm gonna try to boost back. If you have a weak spot, hold down the left mouse button. I think I memorized that weak spot. I'm afraid you can only be shot once. That's a single truth bolt. If you shoot or change your truth bolt, it will disappear. From What? So you said Okay. How does this work? If you target a weak spot, then hold down the left mouse button. You can use the weak spot as a temporary truth bolt. Oh, it has to be a weak spot and you can hold it down to use it as a truth bolt. Right, got it. But he was acting weird. Wow. If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you absolutely take it. Shut up. That's a natural reaction for any guy. No, not really, no. The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So, of course, I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? I wish you'd take me with you. Is there really only two of these? So, you said Byakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... How? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room... <laughs> you, that's a natural rep! The victim was Chihiro. No, it's wrong! Cool, so that's how that works. That's actually really interesting, goddamn. I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim oh, was. Oh, 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 he's right! So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I sure as hell didn't know that! I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? 
Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. I mean, it makes sense, though. Yucky's attitude. It's like he doesn't even care. I've got him cornered. He's acting like he has nothing to do with What's him. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think there is more to it. Think about it. Woo! We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? seen that rope before in my life. Obviously, Fuck! somebody else must have had it hidden away somewhere. What? The difference between the cases? You want me to explain it again? When I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors. And I use those same scissors to arrange the body. But... Chihiro was suspended with... It was some kind of rope. Was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya. Where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope before in my life. <sighs> MOTHERFUCKER! Had it hidden away somewhere. Hey, Biakia, yeah. where'd you- I'd never seen that rope before in my life. No, it's wrong! Woo! I tried to shoot that three different times and missed! Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say- EXTENSION CORD?! EXTENSION CORD?! What? An extension cord? Yakuya, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. Ooh! <laughs> and Yakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. You can't imagine much, though, honestly. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Yep. Is that about right? He's doing it again. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned. If he's not even involved. Wait, not even involved. What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hey, can you shut the fuck up for five seconds, please? Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? The is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling us a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh? Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still, there's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Wait. What was that just now? Something's not right. <clears throat> Shiro's body was definitely found in the girls' locker room, but does that mean... Can I really just accept what Byakuya said as the truth? No, I don't think so. There's definitely something off about... The scene of the crime is off. 
I got it! You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. <laughs> She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. Really? How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. The uh, rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all that. Ooh, that seemed to have strike a chord. Look at the fucking vein in his head. I believe I do. Byaku, did you just... Did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Byaku has been so confident up till now. Maybe Byaku never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Hey, don't just move on without permission. What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. I think that shows the murder took place somewhere else. There was something that switched between the boys' and girls' locker rooms. There's two things that switched, actually. I switch between the... This switched! That is... That did switch. I got it. The, the card boom is also switched, though. killed somewhere else is... The poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boob supermodel. <laughs> but don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god. Genocide Jill, you're, you're amazing. Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Yes. Who the fuck is Tornado? Well, I don't. I don't know. Uh, right. Sorry, I was just getting something. <laughs> Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boys' locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? <laughs> protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. It's not that the skin was scrubbed away, it was moved. A bing, and now I'm back to full health. The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. Yes. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. It looks like a shit stain. Then, does that mean that the carpet was switched too? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? In other words, I'm just really confused in order about to completely this. swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but... Why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? You are way quieter than a music lady. Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? <sighs> to get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your free handbook across the card reader device. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. He was one look decent. I highly doubt that. Wow. I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. 
Is he right? Could Shiro have really gotten to the boys' locker room somehow? Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah, I got it! Shut up. She must have hacked her e handbook. No. She was the ultimate programmer after all. Actually, I was right, I'm but you sure know. That been no problem for her. Probably was. No, I don't think that's it. She used to think I was in the main hall. Huh? What the heck? I'm talking about Leon's handbook, of course. If she had that, she could get into the boys' locker room no problem. Oh. Is it really good? She can all really hot. But she must have hacked. She was the ultimate. I'm sure that would have. No, I don't. She needs to see. Huh? What then? I'm talking about Leon's handbook, of course. No, it's wrong. <laughs> no, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love this guy. Oh, well, yeah, you're, you're uh, totally right about that, yeah! Struck silent by how quickly you gave up. <laughs> Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yep, yep, yep. Hit the nail square on the noggin. Ah, uh, I missed his voice. Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked her, like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... Psst. You can't fix an e-handbook. The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts glaring. So, if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just... wrong? It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So okay then. Fuck. I vote for Biakuya. That then? She was killing the girls' locker room. Biakuya was only did really. We're still, I don't know what else I can Hold do. Hold on a second. Hey yo. I agree with you though. I think you're on the right track. What the? You finally decide to open your mouth, and that's what you've got to say? There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So. Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Hey! Wait, 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 wait! Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This'll make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, all right then. I declare an official class trial recess. Huh? For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. <laughs> oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? Yes, please. Before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put on hold. We headed off with Kyoto and Delete. Where she took us was... The corpse! Oh, cool, great, lovely, excellent. The girls' locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom! What are you trying to pull, Missy? I want to look at the boob lady again. I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her carefully? Like using our hands? No way, no way, no way, no way, no way! It's probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. <gasps> but if it was a bro's dead body, then goddamn, bro, I'm gonna fucking touch the shit out of that dick! It's 
not that I'm creeped out or anything. It's just based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But, but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. That's sexist! Let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine You her. are wrong! So just leave this to me. Sakura. What is this? Some kind of secret girl on girl action? Is that what you two are about? <laughs> I forgot about her for a bit. Oh my god. Oh, he's perfect. That's not it at all. Stop screwing around. Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Turn together in a brief prayer. Sakura then begin to quietly examine her Be body. Be sure to check her entire body. And I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... What is this... What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. Holy shit, she's mad! Sakura's eyes were staring wildly at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This, this girl is... Is what? Is a boy! <laughs> <laughs> what?! joke about something like that earlier, right? Or it was a really fucking Mr. Barracuda over there being a <laughs> There was a there was a trap this whole time? Oh god. Oh Oh god Oh no <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> You're joking, right? He's a trap! It was a trap! Oh no! <laughs> I wouldn't joke about this. It's really true? Oh, never. You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat! Oh my god, then it could be fucking Genocide Shield. No, I don't want her to die. I really like her now all of a sudden. Fuck. Chihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy! <laughs> he was a cross-dresser? Oh, we really on fire! I wish I had killed him! So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting. Oh, I fucking love this case. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial. Oh my fucking god, what? I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Now then, let's <laughs> resume the class trial. And that's why she never wanted to go in with them to train. Oh my god, it all makes sense now. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. That's so fucking funny to me. Oh, uh, I said I liked her, didn't I? Oh, fuck, now I'm gay. I've been trapped. Oh, no. Yes, well, I don't know his reason for hiding it. But the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. That was the embarrassing secret. I think that Chihiro was a guy. Oh god, I fapped her. I didn't, actually. You can trust me, right? I don't like looking anything up on games that I'm playing in case of spoilers, so, you know. You can trust me right then and there. Plus, if I looked up images, I would have known she had a dick. He was a... You know what I mean. That never even crossed my mind. And because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. 
assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. <laughs> so then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boy's locker room, and was then later moved to the girl's locker room. <laughs> what the fuck? And the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girl's locker room. So Chihiro really was killed in the boy's locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little... off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is the most titillating situation! So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever. We still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> Very interesting. I have no clue who it is now. Indeed. Ah, he's off in his own little world. Who the fuck could it what be? What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya's the killer? Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But, but I, I think he might not actually be the killer after all. What? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? More evidence came up! He just seems to be too... easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Overt. Overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. I don't see anything, for I am blind. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy. If you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but it's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct for the time being. I hate this guy! Mark it as correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girls' locker room and decided to alter- WHY WOULD YOU DO THAT?! Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not effing with you. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. Why would you do that? Why though? If you're really telling the truth, then why? Why do you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? Now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well, I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. What the fuck? Why though? We're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Byakuya did it. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well, then. I'm with you, too. Damn straight. Count me in. <laughs> Do you not have a mind of your own? Oh, I don't. I probably sad if it's that guy. I kind of like the guy who's a What am I, an ant or something? <laughs> Ants. Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? If Byakuya didn't do it, then who's the real killer? Who murdered Chihiro? 
One thing we can be sure about the killer. The killer was able to gain access to the real murderer scene, which means... The killer's not Genocide Jack. Doesn't mean the killer's a girl, but... Doesn't mean the killer's... Can't be Genocide Jack, though. I think we ruled that one out. I got it. Okay, cool. Seeing the crime was in a boy's locker room, you need a boy's handbook to get... Since Leon's handbook is apparently broken, the killer would have... Oh, right, yeah, it's broken! Fuck! Good point. Yo, we're talking about the guy. That's all enough. I need to find some more clues. Alright, boys. Welcome to another Make Your Argument thing. Celeste's account. Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Well, clues are one thing, but... Did nobody get a look at the killer? <laughs> Sure, if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. It's over. It's all over. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer. And only the killer. No, it's wrong. I would mean just jumping to a reaction there. Apparently, I'm right. I believe someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes, I did see him. I like how they're now saying him. Huh? Really? Oh, but I suppose only Makoto knows about Makoto. This. The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. Whatever. Just hurry up and tell us. I like the fucking. I just I just looked at his dick. I don't know, something about how the pants are just wrinkled up at his dick, huh? That is the turn on for me. I don't know why his pants are doing that, honestly. It's really weird looking and really distracting. I can't stop looking at his dick area. Please help. It was last night, right before nighttime. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. A track jacket and double bags? But we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. We didn't. It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. I'm back going. I'm in kind of a hurry. Chihiro told me he was... In a hurry. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. So Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to meet with someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Also, because if he went to the girl's locker, he'd actually be fucking murdered. Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much. Oh no, don't tell me it's Jojo, I'll cry. Enough, so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. Oh, what a marvelous friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? You know who the killer is. S seriously? Who, who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? I have no clue! What? You want to track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Inferences or guesses, I think, right? Easy for you to say, but fine. Celeste, did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. 
all the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Chihiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket he took. Does Chihiro's track jacket really hold some clue about the killer? I was gonna edit the two parts together, like the first like 30 minutes and this. Then I realized I would probably want, rather kill myself and wait for videos like this to render out. So yeah, I, I'm good. It's not really hard to believe. First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. Yes. So next we have to ask, right. why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing. So, what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black. I... I don't even have a tracksuit. I don't think it would fit you. This exercising sucks. <laughs> I have a white tracksuit personally. I got it from the warehouse, if you must know. Did any of that really help us get any closer to figuring out who the culprit is? No! It really didn't! Not a chance. You heard him, right? What he just said without even realizing it? First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, why did he choose? What do you mean? I got it. It matched the one. So what you said? The killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him. My tracksuit is black. I, I don't even have a track. Is exercise? I have a white tracksuit personally. I got it from the warehouse, if you must know. Did any of that really help us? No way. Not a chance. I think I have an idea of what it might be. First of all, he was on his way. So next week, why did he choose? What do you mean? I got it. It matched the one. So the killer was wearing the my tracksuit. I don't even have it. His exercising sucks. I have a white tracksuit personally. No. Shoot. Oh, it's something about JoJo. Why did he choose? What do you mean? I got it. It matched the one the culprit was wearing. So what you're saying is the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him. My tracksuit is black. I I don't need this exercise. I have a white track. I got it from the. Did any of that really help us? No way. Not a chance. You hurt. First of all, Ricky was on his way, so next week, why did he choose? What do you mean? This I got it! It matched the one- So, what your- The killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit. Got it. No, it's wrong! Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? Huh? what I say? When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said- so I'm stuffing a track jack into the double bag. Listen, we head off to exercise. She never said anything about the jacket's color. Oh no! He didn't. So why did you say to no, 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 no? I like him. No. What are you? You just. Hey, Celeste. What color was Chihiro's tracksuit? It was blue. As a matter of fact, it was blue. No! And before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Oh god, it's him. It's Jojo. I really like Jojo. Then, Mondo, how did you know what color Chihiro's tracksuit was? Well, because I... I just... 
I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was is if he saw Cherry with it before he died. That's the only possibility. Ah, oh, God, it's him. Cherry? Uh, are you talking about your hero? <laughs> so, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? Just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me. And he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony... You have to check into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. No, it's him! When Celeste noticed it. Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the back. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. Yeah. It would appear you've dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. That's why you said you knew who did it. To put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. But why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. I get to pick for her? What? Because I hate him. The way he... There was a certain turning point that ticked me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. You only call guys dude. For girls, it's chick. And after he was killed, you happen to refer to him as dude. Oh god, it's him. Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. Did you notice such a tiny detail? Are you a witch? She's a witch! You're positively frightful! No, I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Yeah. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? I, 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 uh, I didn't kill anyone. Oh, it's time for the rhythm game. You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation. Bros! It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. That was fast. Well, this does present us with a problem. It seems we are all out of leads. <laughs> My time has nearly come. I like that voice a lot. Goddamn. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Kifumi, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? It's gonna be something so stupid knowing this guy. Oh my god. Actually, no. Now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Jeez, does your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. If you really insist, then... Um... Here it is. Hmm? What do you have there? It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. Well, I don't It must belong to... Find it on the ground, then it's gotta be Chihiro's, right? It's obviously not mine. I have mine in my pocket. I got it. We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the. Oh yeah, sneeze! Right? Oh god. <laughs> For a fact. For a fact indeed. I was totally sure I'd found it. But it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? It won't turn on. Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so fragile. You're right. They're not. 
They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet, this one does appear to be broken. As is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, that is a remarkably high failure rate. This is a long case. I swear the last one was only like an hour, but no, wait, the last one was definitely more than an hour, but this one's still going. <laughs> Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? How precisely did the handbooks get broken? I did the handbooks break? Only one possible explanation. Hating its weak point. I got it. Back to full you health, boys. You told us before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? Yeah. You remember that? <laughs> uh, sure, maybe I let that slip, but I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? Huh? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. Yes, it is actually. Please, Monokuma, tell us. But if I tell you and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just tell us already. Why would we want to break our own handbooks? <sighs> oh, well, I have a weakness for pushy demands. But you're sure you won't follow their example? Then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is... When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally break! I flippin' knew it! You knew it? Yeah, cause I found the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna. Mondo, it was him! No! Oh, God, it was him, and I'm sad. The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you definitely get fried. Also, why was the fat ass in the sun? Never mind, I stopped calling him fat ass. But yeah, I like him. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway. If you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery. What if they found out by accident? What do you mean by accident? What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke? They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. I might know someone who did. Whoa. Seriously? <clears throat> I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... <laughs> and it was... Sorry, bud. I really like you, but it's you. It, you made it really obvious it's you now. Here's my answer. Ah, God. Mondo, your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago, remember? <laughs> yes! Before the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. 
but little did he realize <laughs> that's just a sweat he rag on his fucking book in one of his uniform pockets and when it was all over mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sonic could easily destroy it no wait hold on you've got it all wrong he would never kill i don't accept this show me the proof the actual solid proof I mean, I want to believe it either, but that also is not good to have a doubt. Okay, this is actually a really hard one. Let's go. Let's test Makoto's assertion. Mm -hmm. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words. If Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! See? Look! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! Okay, that's not true, but you know. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says you broke your own, in other words, if Mondo can that proves that- Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! I missed! See? Makoto was- Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! Let's test if what he says you broke your own, in other words, if then that proves- Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! No, that's wrong! Mondo, the handbook you have right now, is it really yours? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall. Isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it! So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's. Which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says- No it doesn't! The handbook is prohibited? That's borrowing it without giving it back, not loaning it. Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student, but if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a great area, I admit, but no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch! What's wrong, bro? C come on! Tell him he's wrong! You are wrong! You have to be wrong! Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning? That way, everything will become clear, and we'll all see if I was right or wrong. Page one of eleven, goddamn right. So, act one. So it's Chihiro stuffing a thing into the bag. And Celeste is right there, and she's like, ah, shit. And Celeste spots her, and. Points to that. Okay. So then Chihiro's like, lol, nope, nothing there. Then she ran off to the locker room. She used the boys' locker room to go into the boys' room. Wait, no. Take it out for a second.
Kara, yeah, he came in. So I was like, hello there. My, my. Very interesting. So he took the rope, hung her up, and took the blood and smeared it on the wall. God, I suck at this. I could use hints, but I feel like hints are cheating at the moment. Also, there's always one wrong hint to the whole thing. I'm gonna try figuring one of these out for once in my goddamn life. I have 20 minutes. What can go wrong? I'm sorry, I would like to figure this out legit, but I'm actually retarded. Tell me everyone has to do to get into locker rooms. That's what I thought. This is here. What dragon is here going to? What? Which one did you go into? Boys, alright, I'm retarded. Some blood splattered onto something, didn't it? Well, it splattered onto multiple things, so... We're talking about killer move too, girls. Let you know we're going to over locker and switch it to scene of the crime. What? The killer took something from the other locker room and switched it. I had to see it. Whatever. Fuck it. We'll go to that one in a second. Where did the killer go after they were done? Sauna. One hand look after into the sauna. Subtle! Fucking dumb! What happened to it? Oh, it overheated. That's what that means. Alright. Maybe it was a blast around to something, didn't it? It splattered onto the poster. I don't know. You know, it's kind of a sad day when the hints are not helping me that much. The killer took something from the other locker room and switched it at the scene of the crime. Is 
this guy's a truth killer should on the carpet as well as something else. It was all right. It was that. The killer is you. First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Simple, because she was really a he, which is why he was able to use his own handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Chihiro, and attacked him. And that's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. I think I got one of these wrong, honest, like, I'm stupid. And finally carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and using one of those, a boy could get into the girl's locker room without- I think I fucked this up. Oh, no, I, I didn't. Alright, good. And that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. They changed the layout of the boys' and girls' locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. That could have been the end of things, but no. Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library, and then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sauna. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence, Chihiro's handbook. Just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it all played out.
Oh, Jojo. Oh, Jojo, why would you do this? Here we go, boys. This can't be right. Where's your evidence? Yeah, where's your evidence? You need evidence. You need proof. Without any proof, you can't pin any of this on him. I mean, that's the Mondo's kill. That's already revealed itself earlier in the trial. I guess I'm not sure where Mondo's handbook is right now. Everything will become clear. No of them is added to the bull time battles. Oh, god damn it. Why? No. <laughs> this <laughs> oh, chill. Let's talk about, about fever time and. Oh, I'm not saying that. During a bull time battle, if you press the space key, fever time will activate. The tempo will be forced to its max. Even if, at this point, if, even if you push buttons at random, you won't miss. So if you press. Right, um, uh, 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 just ready for a verbal assault. Which only lasts until your folks get dressed. Make it possible to get. Won't be fair if you got. If only you got to access special time, right? Let's appear something called time for. That uh, your opponent could use. If your opponent uses mm, time during bullet time battle, your tempo marker will disappear, making it quite a bit tougher to hit the, new, hit the buttons in rhythm. You're gonna activate fever time at this point. Never mind, I'm sure nothing would happen. I don't know what I was worried about. Unsurprisingly, if your action is set to gentle, your opponent won't use mm time. I'm interested in what would happen. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I repeat you. False. Show me some evidence. I won't listen. False. I refuse to vote. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. False. Show me some evidence. I won't listen. Show me some evidence. This should prove it. Dead. All right, what you actually want to do those fucking rhythm games are actually really easy. Thinking so far is right. Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we'll. You don't gotta do that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I did it. I killed him. Oh, now I'm sad. You just flat out admit it. Now my heart's broken. Ah. A B A A A A A A A. Nice. Wonder if, if you get all A's, you you don't suck dick and get. Like besides that one part, I did this perfectly. God damn it! There's always one thing that I fuck up in this. I hate myself. Nice. What are you saying? I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just give up. Let me see it's just like Fuck, I don't even remember the word I'm missing. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. Roger that! Wait! Hold on! No waiting! No holding on! Time for the moment we've all been waiting for! Grab your lever and give it a yank! I mean, I didn't fail at all this time, unlike last time where I failed twice. Who will you elect as the blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? <laughs> Forgot about this. Uh, I really like this guy, honestly. What? Uh oh, this time it looks like you got it right again. Yes, it is so. The blackened that killed Chihiro Fujisaki was Mondo Owada. Unbelievable. In case you're wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer. You're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Irishimu. You need to be more careful. 
I refuse to believe it. There's no way. No way he would kill someone. Sorry. What? What is this? Why are you apologizing? Why? 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 Why did you do it? Now then. Well, looks like Mondo's taken a vow of silence, so let me explain on his behalf. Actually... The story of this murder is the sad story of two men. Huh. Oh, whoever anyone doesn't really want to hear, you can hit the control key to fast forward the text. Anyway, there was once a young boy. His name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You're so weak even though you're a boy. He heard things like that as long as he could remember, but he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and buried himself further and further into that weakness. He had taken the fragile form of a petite young girl. He had chosen that as his way out. Um. Now nobody will ever say anything about it, even though you're a boy. Now I tell you, wrap. No, but no matter how tightly he wrapped himself up in that shell. The inferiority complex had already taken root deep inside of him, and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. Weak. 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 Once the killing game had begun here at school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And a lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. Which, of course, includes Shihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy. Hey, um... That was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. If that was real, that would be the end. The hardened shell would crack, the armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured being thrust in such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. And yet... Uh, I'm sorry. But... but... Annoyingly, he used a threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. That's right. Now's my chance. I want to change. I'm gonna get stronger and accept who I am. Strong enough so when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay, I'll get better. And with that thought at the front of his mind, he... With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so... That day he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his mind and body. But sadly, that would be the first and only chance he would get at it. Hey, um... When he decided he to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell the person his secret first, and asked him to help him from there. The person he went to was... Yeah, that's right. It was me. <laughs> yup, it sure was! <laughs> the Biker King fellow been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Chihiro probably figured that even if he confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. Uh -huh. Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to. Maybe talking to Mondo about well, he gives him courage, so he went ask so he went ask Mondo and become strong. <laughs> That was his aspiration. And he thought that with only Mondo's support, would he ever be able to come close to that. Correct. So then, that's why Mondo did what he did to keep the promise he made to Chihiro. Well, what did he... I mean, that's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room into the girls' locker room? Indeed. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Um, well, I don't have to cover up what he done. Certainly. That could have been part of it, but I don't think that was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he made to Chihiro. But... How does moving the body keep a secret? Because... If everyone who even killed in the boys' locker room, everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity, so... He tried to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his handbook, see? Then Mona did all that to keep the promise he made to Chihiro, who he also killed. 
So why would he do that? The more I hear about you, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So why, why did you? Yeah. It was no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. I knew it. That's what triggered it after all. Possibility of having your embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. What? What is this? That's impossible. Nothing could have been that bad. Something they want anyone to know, even if I'm killing someone. You're wrong. It's impossible. Don't make me repeat myself. How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standards is the height of folly. If you can, even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. <laughs> well, while we're on the subject, why don't I tell you? The embarrassing memory. That secret didn't want anyone to know. Hey, you know what Mondo did? Oh, no! Why? Even if I only got to know him one time, a little bit. He brought up his brother. He brought up that they started the gang. Oh, come on, man. He killed his own brother. <laughs> Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraff across the country tremble. But the only reason he had a chance to join the gang, first place, because of a certain someone. Yep, I knew that. <laughs> Mondo's older brother's name was Daya Owada, yep. Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daya, Daya, Daya that Mondo had ever got on a motorcycle. Mondo's brother was his only family growing up. He was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he intimidated him in everything he did. Mondo was the epitome, 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 epitome of the starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, the charismatic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang. For anyone new, it had grown into the biggest biker gang in the country. Daya, the older brother, number one in the gang. The number two, his younger brother, Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy. But when Mondo started to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his brother someday, his brother's greatness, his reputation, began to gnaw on Mondo's very soul. The kid's gonna take over for Daya, huh? Daya created this game with his bare hands. Mondo's just relied run for life. Does someone like that really be our leader? All I'll do is make our gang look mm -hmm. bad. Almost every day, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers of the other members of the gang, which is why... I... I just... You gotta get stronger. Stronger than Daya. Just... Once. Just just once time. Just one time. No matter what, I gotta don't win. With me. I don't care what it takes. I gotta come out on the top. And on... And on the night of his amazing brother's retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged him to a street race. But during the race, tragedy struck. The kid pushed his brother ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, and dashed into oncoming traffic. But suddenly... Oh my god! So he didn't kill his brother, per se, but... Oh, now I feel even worse. Laying in his kid brother's arms, the older brother delivered his final words. <laughs> my, bad, my bad, kid. I fucked up. Sorry. Of course he knows his brother's fault, but... Daya never blamed him for what happened. Hey, kid, the rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the gang together. Because it's the team. You and me put together. It's a, pro a promise between me. Oh, my God. Oh... He decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang in order to keep the gang together and and keep the promise to his brother. He could never admit to anyone that his own weakness that caused the accident. As a result, the team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who bested his big brother. Daya was going to lose to his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation to what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. He wanted to lead the team so bad, he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I... I just... S strong. Yeah. Strong, 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 strong. And yet... And yet... 
As soon as that killing game began, he realized, no matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that can die in an instant. <laughs> and then the lovely... The hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. At that point, it was clear I would have no problem shedding light on his secret. Mondo killed his own brother. No, no matter what, I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother worked to create would have been destroyed. His death, all the guilt I've been carrying around, would have been for nothing. So that's why... I, that's why I... I Mondo? Yeah. After I saw what Monokuma had on me, my head filled up with a kind of fuzzy uneasiness and it started swirling around. I never felt anything like it before. I, I just... I didn't know what to do about it. I wasn't sure what to think or say, but after a while, that fuzzy uneasiness <sighs> turned itself into a rock-hard lump of anxiety weighed down in my stomach. And it was right around then that Shiro asked me to start working out with him. And right there, I... He told me a secret. <sighs> Seriously? Jesus. Uh I'm sorry. Sorry I lied to you. But why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Huh? Because I mean, keep the secret all this time, right? If anyone found out, you what? would. You're right, but. I want to change. Wrap myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. It's words like a knife to my gut. Oh my god. I feel like he's exposing the lie I've been living myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong, it can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us. You piece of... So what, you're saying I should just say what? it? You're saying... What? If I really am, I should just be able to tell everyone my secret? Huh? huh? I was... Jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. This is really long... Little thing. I thought I was gonna get killed, like, 20 minutes ago. I had a strength... He had a strength face as a weakness. Try to, and cr to try and overcome it. He's the kind of strength I never had. So I was jealous of him. That jealousy broke me. Why? Are you making fun of me? I'm strong. Are you fucking with me right now? No. I'm, I'm not making fun of you. You really are strong, Mondo. I feel like I could hear something starting to creak. Something inside my head. <sighs> what do you want me to do? What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to sit back, let my secret get revealed, and ruin everything? What's wrong? Damn you! But you tell me all that. You're trying to rub my failure in my face? I just wanted to. No, no, I just really admire you. I admire your strength. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I am strong. Strong. I'm strong. Oh God. Stronger than you. You son of a bitch. Stronger than Daya. Fucking hell. I don't remember anything after that. When I woke up again, he was lying at my feet, covered in blood. A dumbbell in my hand, just staring at him down on the ground. Hey! I... I killed him. I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. Mondo. He was normally so aggressive, so angry. He had that weak side away from everyone. That was his secret. A weakness like that lived in his heart. Like his, and it turned him cold blooded. God damn it. <laughs> Look at him! You see? You're all just like him! For a secret from the past, for a memory, for that he killed another living human in cold blood. He couldn't cut free of his regrets from the outside world. He doesn't know what true strength is. Do you see any hope anywhere there? Because I sure don't! You bastard. Just shut up, you son of a bitch. Go say that. Go ahead, say that again. I dare you. Yeah. Okay, I'll say as many times as I want. It's what I want to say, but <laughs> unfortunately, I can't do that. Oh, God. I can't do that right now because it's, because the time for punishing is fast approaching. I know how he's going to die. It's going to suck. P punishing? It can't be. You mean execution. Well, now, well, now, well, now, well, now. That's what I promised you, right? The black and that disturbs the peace will be punished. Ridiculous. But hold on. Now then, I prepared a very special punishment. Bye, Mondo, aka Jojo. It was nice knowing you. No, wait, wait. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. Oh my God. Ah! Poor guy. He's losing Sorry, his friend. Man. I couldn't keep the promise we made. Oh, now I'm sad. 
Here we go. Rest in peace, Jojo. Game over. Mondo has been found guilty. Time for punishment. <laughs> oh shit. That's not what I was expecting. I thought I was just gonna get like run over by a truck. Oh, I should have Monokuma. He went the cage to death. Yeah. He's just something to do with motorcycle, which was half what I was thinking. Oh god. I'm gonna be quiet now. <laughs> Inconsistency he was spinning vertically originally now he's going sideways and there's literally nothing there holy shit Forever be at peace. <laughs> it can't be. My brother. Another murder, another execution. I don't want to feel again. <laughs> oh. I mean, one of, the, one of the guys I really liked is dead, but. It's, it's pretty funny to me. Everyone's life is taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen. Taka's sad screams invade our skulls. We reach forced to realize once again. But he, of course, had to. <laughs> what a disappointment. This is the end of the game. Byakuya? What is this? You're completely insane, you know that? A game? One of our friends is dead. Do you realize that? Naturally. Of course I do. Because this game is life or death. Hey. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response except that. However. I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? What? Why? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because it makes things more interesting. His voice was calm, emotionless, like the voice of death. It chilled me to the bone. <laughs> Last day when the murder took place, I was in the library as usual. Honestly. So you ignored the nighttime rule, too. <laughs> that rule never mattered to me. I don't want to call agreeing to it. There is nothing to be done. Well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. The night grew late and I decided to return to my room, which is where I stumbled upon him. <laughs> Spotted Mondo coming out of the girls' locker room. After he'd gone, I looked away and saw the corpse. What do you mean you witnessed a murder? <laughs> you was such a fool. You didn't have the slightest idea that I'd seen him. Well... So you're saying you knew who the culprit was from the very beginning. That's right. Indeed. If that had been the end of it, how boring would that have been? I mean, what a waste of time to have the answer revealed right at the beginning. <laughs> which is why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought it would liven things up. Honestly, I like this this trial a lot. I, I like the first one. I like this one a lot more, though. This is this was a great trial, honestly. Even though the ending made me really sad. Cause I, like, I like Mondo. Oh, all that to liven things up? I see. So after hearing about Genocide Jack from Toko, you decided to use that. To create the fake murder scene? But... 
Well, damn, man. If we haven't figured out who really done it, you would have been dead too, right? <laughs> well, obviously, I would have revealed the truth before I reached that point. Of course, Byakuya turned to look me in the eye. I could feel his sharp eyes piercing into me. Hmm. Thanks to a certain remarkable someone, it never did. And I was able to perform an interesting experiment. <laughs> interesting. Once I do decide to become blackened, I know who to have to look out for. Oh no! What? Correct. So that was your reason. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Indeed. Yes, we're done listening to your story. Moving on. Hey. Let me like to ask Monokuma. What's this? Oh, I'm up next? You. I like to perform these elaborate executions each time, correct? My question is, why? <laughs> do you like them? But you know, this punishment, this despair, is not just for you. <laughs> well, this is a new song. Uh, I think, anyways. All this punishment, all this despair is my gift to mankind itself. What? You're over-exaggerating. <laughs> I am not over-exaggerating. These punishments are meant to transform all hope to despair. Damn. What do you mean? Huh? Mean? Mean? <laughs> mean? Me 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 Good grief, I don't understand why you have to pick apart every little stupid thing! <laughs> Whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and I'm gonna stand alone as a victor. And everything will be revealed to me. Ooh, how ah, the noble son of a noble family. Truly you understand me. <laughs> I think it's a sort of a terrifying friendship. Hup, I've never stooped to the level of a childish criminal like you. Let me just say this. After I have achieved complete victory, you're up next. I'm gonna find you and kill you, understand? In the name of my family. In the name of the Togami family, for which victory is a foregone conclusion. You're getting all riled up! Ooh, it's like you're the main video main character of a video game or something. No trash mob for you. So whatever it takes, I will kill you. Foo <laughs> temper, temper, someone sounds like someone needs a nap. Monokuma's laugh peeled across the courtroom, and the curtain closed on a case of Chihiro and Mondo. I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game would still continue, because the mastermind wouldn't let it end. For those of us who are still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. It was a kind of despair that felt like a blind puppy in hell had more future than us. All our courage, our effort, our friendship, it felt like it amounted to nothing at all. It was the worst kind of despair. Well, anyway, like I was saying, this is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? What? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. Next thing I'd like to ask as you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away! Who is it? The 16th high school student, I mean. Ooh, ooh. My, my. You really took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied! Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. And nobody be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> oh, there's just 10 remaining now. What, 16 students? What? What the fuck? Boy's life of despair. Oh man, now I'm sad. Okay, goodbye.